specifically in the mold remediation business, killing of mold is oftentimes mistaken as effective treatment for remediation. And the standards are pretty clear that cleaning is the primary function. So we wanna remove mold from a structure um, or location as opposed to just simply trying to kill it. You're always gonna have mold in the environment. And remediation is not about eradicating or eliminating mold from the environment, it's, it's about controlling it. We tend to cycle the same air and particles can accumulate in an air in, in a home in, in ways that it didn't used to. Hi, Brian. Um, thanks for joining us today here um, at Magic Plan. We are really excited to have you here. Um, why, why don't we start with a quick introduction? Um, you have a, a big background in mold remediation um, and uh, turned that into a product, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So I have 25 years of experience in the cleaning, restoration and remediation market. Um, I've done thousands of projects both personally um, engaged in the actual work as well as overseeing and managing those. Um, I've, I've planned um, small projects in the hundreds of dollars and uh, tens of thousands, uh, up to $100,000 projects uh, in remediation of commercial buildings and large spaces. So lots of experience uh, under my belt. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we found in the industry is that there was an excessive use of chemicals. So it's specifically in the mold remediation business, killing of mold is oftentimes mistaken as effective treatment for remediation. And the standards are pretty clear that cleaning is the primary function. So we want to remove mold from a structure um, or location as opposed to just simply trying to kill it. In the process of doing that, you run into different types of cleaners. And unfortunately, many of those cleaning products um, can be dangerous. So they can cause chemical burns, uh, caustic burns, uh, oxidation burns. And it was a problem that we've had here in my local business um, in Indiana. So in central Indiana, I'm the president of Indiana Mold Remediation. And we have, you know, had guys in the past that have had uh, chemical problems with burning around uh, gloves or masks just simply from using the existing product line and I saw a pretty desperate need for a reduction in the amount of chemicals that were being used. So um, I partnered with a, a friend of mine out of Carnegie Mellon University, uh, Terry Collins, invented a new technology called Tamil technology and it uses a um, Uh, catalyst that mim is mimicked is a mimic uh, biomimic mimicry technology that's based on um, an enzyme in the body. So it, the body uses oxidation to remove different contaminants um, from the bloodstream, and it does that with a peroxidase enzyme. Well, there's an active side of that enzyme. There's an active part of that molecule that actually does the the work we call it the business end it's the business end of the molecule so terry was bright enough and smart enough over the last 30 years to um, uh, uh, mimic that technology in such a way that it can be utilized outside of the body and that's tamil technology uh, the current version of that is nt7 new tamil number seven and that's used to formulate dot cleaning products which are dry form products that are easy to transport, easy to store, and they don't have the same characteristics of many of the cleaning products in the industry um, that can cause physical damage to our bodies. Uh, they're less likely to do so, but yet they still have the power and the capacity to do some really deep and intense cleaning. Cool. So cleaning up uh, people's homes. Um, let's go go back to, you, you mentioned about uh, um, Uh, concentration is a big factor, but like, how do you go about your kind of uh, updated and new standard uh, using the dot cleaning product? Yeah, dot's not magic. Uh, so you guys are magic plan. I think you've got a, a, a beautiful um, setup here. Um, it certainly will help, you know, tracking um, jobs and it, it makes bidding jobs so much easier, especially for the small guy. 
Uh, I think that's fantastic. Dot's a, just a tool, just like Magic Plan is a tool. You know, you still have to do your job. And Dot Cleaner is just part of, uh, is just a tool that's used in the process. So it, it can be used as the, the primary cleaning uh, product between uh, HEPA vacuumings and um, dramatically reduce the effort and the time involved without increasing the risk. It does a great job of displacing high strength hypochlorite products that have become very common in the industry for getting rid of staining in, in structural lumber and, um, and on other surfaces. So, so DOT certainly makes that uh, better, but the, the, the cleaning mold remediation industry hasn't changed all that much. Um, I think that there's a growing scrutiny uh, uh, with mycotoxins. So mycotoxins are becoming a, a greater concern. They're, I think, more generally being recognized as a, as a true health concern. And as the data is, um, is, is found, that that's uh, changing in the industry. So you're having more and more concern about mycotoxins, and we're going to have to address those. Um, the oxidation, I think, will become the standard bearer, and there's going to be different types of oxidation. So you're going to see a lot of oxidation technologies flood the market. We're already seeing it. Um, but oxidation is going to make the cleanup process easier because oxidation is a chemical uh, thing that's physically doing something. So unlike uh, uh, products that kill through some kind of toxicity or some kind of a toxicological effect, um, oxidation is actually breaking things apart. So it's tearing or apart cellular walls and it's uh, tearing apart the guts that spill out of the inside of the, you know, the organism that you've killed. And they are non, um, y y y there's no resistance to them. So you're, you're not going to build up a resistance. You're not going to have a resistant strain of bacteria that's going to somehow uh, form some resistance to oxidation. I mean, there are, there are there are barriers, but they're not new barriers. Should, should we be scared now? Uh, no resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like no solution if it goes out of hand. No, I'm. I'm, I'm um, joking. no. So, it's so, a natural process, right? Yeah. So, the thing, uh, the uh, thing with mold and mold remediation is that mold's ubiquitous. It's in every environment, everywhere in the world. Um, I'm here in central Indiana. We happen to live in kind of a swamp bowl here. It's low. Uh, or, I mean, we're right at sea level. Uh, I think the highest point in Indiana is a little hill out a couple, you know, a couple of miles west of me. Um, the, it's it's a pretty low area, and so it's very humid here. So mold's a naturally occurring thing in our environment all the time, but it's everywhere. It's in the Rocky Mountains. It's in the uh, it's in the Antarctic. You're always going to have mold in the environment. And remediation is not about eradicating or eliminating mold from the environment. It's it's about controlling it. So we are finding that in new construction, uh, where we've made homes tighter and more energy efficient, that we tend to cycle the same air and particles can accumulate in an air in, in a home in, in ways that it didn't used to. So when I was growing up, my grandmother's, grandmother's home leaked like a sieve. You know, we used to have six blankets at night because uh, in the middle of winter that you, you could feel the breeze coming in through the windows. Um, yeah, my house like that's not like that anymore. Like I don't feel a breeze, and I can lay around in the middle of winter in my in my in my shorts and my t-shirt, and I'm I'm pretty comfortable. So we have these nice tight homes that are more energy efficient. Unfortunately, it also means that we have what what wasn't a problem in Grandma's house. So Grandma always had mold in her cellar uh, where she kept her canned goods. But the home exchanged air with the out, outside so many times that there was just never really a drastic accumulation of particulates in the home, including mold. In, in modern construction, when we have these tight environments, you can have a small area of mold growth from a plumbing leak or from a you know water damage that went unaddressed. And that small amount of mold can accumulate in the environment over time, which actually increases the likelihood for more mold to grow on surfaces in the home. And so it's kind of a vicious cycle where you, it's just kind of trapped inside the home. So I, I think being aware of, um, of uh, water problems, water issues, condensation issues, if water's on the windowsill every uh, time it's cold outside, that's eventually going to cause some mold growth. And you need to be mindful of that because it can create an interior problem in ways that it couldn't in the past. But I don't know that you need to be scared. Like mold's a pretty, pretty normal part of the world that we live in. Uh, thank God or the universe or, you know, wherever you're 
uh, belief system lies that that exists. Otherwise, we have a whole bunch of wood laying around that uh, just never broke down. So it has a useful yeah, function. Yeah, yeah, it has a useful function. It has penicillin, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the penicillin that you injected last year because you had a you know a sinus infection that that probably that's comes from mold. So penicillin is a direct derivative from penicillium mold. You mentioned it earlier. It's all about the concentration, right? Yeah, it's, that's uh, it. Not, not just for the chemicals, but also for the, for the mold.